Hi, it's Dr. Centeno, and today we're going to talk about uh, stem cells for neck and back issues and helping patients avoid invasive surgery. And just before we begin, anytime I talk about the Regenix C or cultured stem cell procedure, that refers to an independently owned and operated facility in Grand Cayman that licenses our technology and where we as physicians take our patients who require that more advanced technology. So what we'll discuss today, the basics of platelets and stem cells, who are we, interventional versus surgical orthopedics, why surgery often isn't the answer for spine problems, understanding the spine, what kind of disc problem do you have, what are our results, and also we'll talk about treating other areas outside of the low back, including the neck and neck side joint, and then we'll wrap it all up. So let's talk a little bit about the basics. Everything we do is autologous. That means this is your own cells. And we offer a few different types of procedures. They break down into two big categories, one being platelets. And in that category, we offer platelet-rich plasma, or what we call super concentrated platelets. Um, and we also offer lysates. We're on our third generation advanced platelet lysate where we strip the growth factors out of the platelets. We also offer stem cell injections, and those break down into two types, a same day stem cell procedure that isolates stem cells and puts them back in in the same surgical procedure, and a culture procedure that grows cells to bigger numbers. As far as platelets are concerned, again, that's two different kinds of treatments, one being platelet-rich plasma, where whole platelets are concentrated. Uh, we concentrate them to much higher numbers, so we call that super concentrated platelets. And a platelet lysate, where we're stripping the growth factors out of the platelets. Uh, so that's a very different type of thing than platelet-rich plasma, although it's related. And very few people offer platelet lysates. We're one of the few folks that have been doing that, and we've been doing that for about 10 years. As far as stem cells are concerned, I think most people may have heard at this point, but probably some people haven't, that your body has its own stem cell supply. Uh, those are called adult stem cells. Obviously, most everyone has heard of stem cells from an embryo. We don't use those at all. And you may or may not have heard that there's a specially engineered type stem cell uh, called IPS. But our focus is really on adult stem cells. So an adult stem cell is an undifferentiated cell that's held in reserve until replacement or repair is needed. It can turn into lots of different stem cell or lots of different cell types. And it can also orchestrate a repair response. So to use a construction site metaphor, platelets are a bit like espresso shots given to the workers to help them work harder and faster. Stem cells are this curious mix of a general contractor, but who can also hire subcontractors to do the job or to do the repair. But at the end of the day, that contractor can also turn into the bricks and mortar. And again, we offer two different types of stem cell procedures. We're one of the only clinics in the world that does that. We offer a same day type treatment that I've explained and a culture treatment where cells are grown to bigger numbers over a couple weeks and then put in later. So who are we? Well, we've been in lots of different publications through the years. We've been on The Doctors a couple times, Good Morning America, all these different magazines uh, and TV shows. And we're the original orthopedic stem cell procedure since 2005. Anyone else that says they've been doing this a long time in the United States uh, has not been doing it as long as we have. We've been doing this longer than anyone else in the U.S., we were the first folks to do this in the U.S. 
and we've treated lots and lots of patients since 2005. Uh, this is actually the most recent, I'm gonna switch here to a pen. Most recent number we put out on the website now is 16,000 Regenex procedures have been performed to date, and we're adding about 2,000 procedures to our registry uh, a year. Uh, a registry is where we track these patients and track those results. And we focus on uh, bioengineering, clinical research, lab research, and treating patients. So unlike a lot of folks doing this in particular, we do a lot of laboratory research, meaning we have a university style stem cell lab as part of our uh, clinical uh, research program, which is quite different than other providers. Everyone else doing this mostly just has a little bedside centrifuge that they throw the cells in, uh, but we do the primary university style laboratory research and publish that. So a 30,000 foot view of orthopedics and stem cells. Interventional versus surgical orthopedics, which is a key component for us and a very important uh, distinction. We are interventional orthopedics. Our goal is to replace the need for more aggressive and invasive surgical orthopedic procedures. And spine surgery is not doing well, so it could use all the help it can get, frankly. Uh, large studies have shown that low back fusion has really high complication rates. Uh, recent research has suggested that spine fusion results are no better than no surgery. In addition, you may have heard that if you fuse out one area of the spine, you're going to get overload above and below that area, and eventually you'll be treating new spots. Surgery to treat spinal stenosis in the big sport trial that just came out recently was no better than no surgery. And disc surgery is no better than no surgery by one year. So everything you'll see here tonight is an injection without surgery, which is a very important thing to understand. Let's now drill down to a 10,000 foot view so let's start understanding the spine because it's very critical that in order to really understand the complexities of how stem cells and regenerative medicine interface with the spine, you've got to understand how the spine is put together at a pretty good uh, level of uh, comprehension. So what does the spine do? Well, it's a series of blocks that stack one on top of the other. Now, as you might imagine, any series of blocks that stack are gonna be a little bit unstable toward the top. So something to keep in the back of your head. These blocks called vertebrae have shock absorbers between them called discs. So we're gonna insert the discs in between those blocks and those are going to act as shock absorbers. And the vertebra have a back part that contains where the, the, uh, these vertebra meet and that's called the facet joint. So if we add the back part in, you can see that these areas back here are where these vertebra meet in the back, and those are called facet joints. And the spine protects the spinal cord and nerves that transmit lots of important information. So if we add in the spinal cord, if we add in the nerves, that's really the function of the spine, is to provide not only a rigid core that we can attach bones to, but also to protect the spinal cord and nerve roots. Now, for many patients and doctors, this is kind of where the story end, that's, ends. That's all they really consider when they're looking at the spine. But to really understand the spine, we're actually missing a few very key pieces. As we talked about, or as I talked about in the first slide, 
the spine has a stability problem, like a skyscraper without supports. It has way too many blocks stacked too high. So we have to solve that stability problem or you're not going to be able to stand up straight and your spine's going to be a mess before it starts. So to prevent this from happening, the spine has two main systems, ligaments and muscles. The ligaments act like duct tape to hold the vertebra together. So we're going to bring in some ligaments here. And you can see now we've got duct tape, if you will, to hold all this stuff and to limit motion, which is good. But we still haven't solved our problem of how the spine is going to move and stay aligned. Because unless it moves and stays aligned, we're going to be pinching nerves all over the place, which is going to make uh, the patient miserable. So we don't want that. How your spine accomplishes that is through segmental muscles or uh, a muscle group called the multifidus that actually stabilizes the spine and keeps everything aligned. So without that muscle in there, what we would have is an unstable spine where the individual vertebra would become misaligned as you moved. So very, very, very critical that we have ligaments and multifidus. Now we'll get into a little bit of that later, but we look at both of these components when we're treating the spine. So let's look at our spine care spectrum. We've been doing this longer than anyone else. There's, I, I, there's no one else even close as far as using stem cells in the spine. So we have a decade long experience at this point sitting here in 2015 that we can draw from. And we'll talk a little bit about some patient stories as we go. I'll show you some data as we go. But in general, what I see when I talk to patients is that they really want to see patients like them so they can understand how someone else just like them did. So we routinely treat uh, uh, headaches, neck pain, upper back issues, low back issues, and lumbopelvic issues, i.e. SI joint, etc. And we have a very broad spine care spectrum. So that means that we have different type of platelet approaches. We have a same day stem cell approach and we have a cultured stem cell approach. Again, no one else offers that. What you generally see these days in folks that just started treating the spine in the last year or two is that they'll generally throw some magic stem cells from a same day procedure in the spine. Um, you might see every once in a while someone also doing some PRP. You don't see anyone doing any platelet growth factor work. You don't see anyone really treating ligaments in the spine and also focusing on the other aspects of what needs to be treated. And you certainly don't see anyone doing cultured stem cell work in the spine. And our decade long experience has taught us which type of therapy works best for which type of patient. So I'm going to get into that now. So I generally see patients that come to me having talked to uh, a clinic that just opened its doors in the last 12 or 24 months. Um, and what they want after seeing the advertisements online is they want magic stem cells put in their disc. But they're not too clear really what kind of disc issue they have. They only know that there's something going on with their disc. So it's very important for you to understand what kind of issues you have. Do you have a herniated disc? Do you have a bulging disc? Do you have a torn and painful disc or a degenerated disc? These are four very different animals that respond very differently 
to different kinds of biologic treatments, platelets and stem cells. So a herniated disc is when the disc material squirts out of the disc. A bulging disc is when the whole thing bulges and can irritate a nerve. A torn and painful disc is when the disc tears and becomes painful, but there's still good disc height. There's still disc there. And then a degenerated disc is when the disc height itself gets smaller and the disc starts to collapse. When that happens, the ligaments get lax, the disc itself becomes unstable, and the facet joints become overloaded because they also have too much pressure being placed on them. So if we look at a herniated or bulging disc, most of these patients do really well with just a platelet epidural or what we call the PL disc procedure. Our focus here is to take our third generation platelet lysate, which has growth factors from the patient's own blood platelets and inject it around the irritated nerve. So uh, inject it in this general vicinity, do what's called a transframinal epidural. And again, these are for patients that have a herniated disc or a bulging disc, irritating a nerve. And generally that works pretty well. So again, herniated or a bulging disc. This is some data that we collected a while back uh, that compared a platelet epidural using that third generation platelet lysate to a steroid epidural. And you can see here functional rating index at, at three months and six months uh, versus the platelet epidural. Uh, and in this particular scale, more is better. So you can see here the platelet epidural using that third generation platelet lysate or the PL disc procedure outperforming a steroid epidural. And given that steroid epidurals are the most common things that this type of patient would be exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis, that's good. And this is a patient story. This is a patient who had a bulging disc irritating a, a, a nerve. And this is the kind of thing that we can see uh, and that we see in hundreds of patients that we treat like this a year. And quite interestingly is our, our patients with massively blown out discs like this one here who were able to help without ever injecting inside the disc. We can help this patient simply by injecting that platelet lysate in the general vicinity uh, around the disc without taking the additional risk of entering the disc. So very important to understand. Now, some patients who don't resolve with that approach who have bulging discs may benefit from a specially cultured type of stem cell being injected into the disc bulge. And that's the Regenix C uh, or cultured stem cell procedure. And if you go online, you'll see a decade's worth of work on stem cells. And my summary of that, um, you know, you'll see uh, over here how long they had tried conventional treatment. You'll see over here some story, uh, just a little bit of information on the patient, the kind of disc they had and the type of improvement they had for how long. You can see here two years follow-up, six months follow-up, four years follow-up, etc. And this is the kind of thing that we would generally see. A chronic disc bulge here and here uh, going away after a very specialized injection of stem cells into the disc bulge. Now, not every single patient gets that result, but we are comfortable that about 70% of our patients get that kind of result.
And these are generally patients who can't be managed with just putting in the platelets epidural or the platelet growth factors epidural. Now, the other kind of patient that we talked about was the patient with a torn and painful disc. And for patients with torn and painful discs, a same day stem cell injection into the disc itself can be effective for these patients because they don't generally respond to platelet epidurals. And this is the kind of patient who self declares himself as having this kind of issue. So this is actually placing stem cells into the disc space itself. Now, this works well, and for the right patient, it's a godsend. Having said that, doing an injection of anything into the disc is always higher risk. So we don't take this lightly. We don't believe that sprinkling magic pixie dust stem cells into everyone's disc is an appropriate thing to do especially when many patients can be treated without entering the disc in a lower risk procedure. But again, if you've got this kind of issue, this type of procedure may be a good fit for you. Also realize there is no one trick pony for degenerative disc patients. So now we're on to a new kind of issue, degenerative disc disease or DDD. And again, remember I said in a degenerated disc, these patients tend to lose disc height. That tends to cause the ligaments back here to become lax. The joint itself or the disc space becomes sloppy. And you see the facet joints getting overloaded and getting arthritis. So they develop compressed nerves and stenosis, arthritic facet joints, and lax ligaments leading to instability, meaning things move around too much. So placing magic stem cells into their disc isn't going to do anything for the other problems. And so for these patients, they need really a triple approach. So again, they've got degenerative disc disease, the joints and the ligaments can no longer support the spine well. The joints start getting arthritis. The disc space collapses. And the whole thing gets sloppy. And look at all of these ligaments here that I'm putting some X's through here. There are a massive amount of ligaments in the spine. And it's interesting that you've probably never heard anyone talk about them, but they're there and treating them be, can be an, an incredibly important part of treating degenerative disc disease. So the Regenix DDD procedure focuses on the precise platements, placement of biologics like platelets or stem cells into the area between the disc and the irritated nerve. Uh, and sometimes uh, that's directly into a stenosis area, stenosis being an area where bone spurs are pressing on nerves. We treat the arthritic facet joints and the lax ligaments. So all three things are treated. And these are examples of recent patients. This is a woman here who just wanted to go and uh, and plant coral when she got to the point where she was financially secure. She got to that point, but she could no longer dive because of her back. So we were able to thankfully help her realize that dream without surgery. And this is a woman here who was told she needed uh, many different types of low back surgery, at least a fusion and a wide laminectomy for compressed nerves in her back. And her experience uh, with the DDD procedure. That's actually a, a tweet from Twitter. And remember the facet joint that I talked about early on that we've intermittently discussed that's back here. We also treat damaged or arthritic facet joints. 
and sometimes it's just the facet joint that's causing the problem. So this is an example of a car crash victim. This is now in the upper back or thoracic spine. You can see here that the facet joints have grown and have become swollen and are putting pressure on the thoracic spinal cord. And you can see after the DDD procedure, we've got now a lot more room here. So the facet joints have gotten smaller. So that's an example of the kind of thing that can happen. As far as other spine care, we treat cervical facet joints and disc injuries, as well as SI joint syndrome. So again, not just one or two areas of the spine. An example of a common procedure for a cervical facet problem is radiofrequency lesioning. That's where the doctor goes in and places a probe along some of the nerves that take pain from the joint and try to burns away or tries to burn away those nerves. Again, the procedure destroys important nerves that take pain signals and much more information to and from the facet joint. Uh, our approach using platelet, platelets or stem cells has the potential to help heal the joint. That should be platelets. Let's put an S on that. Uh, so again, we would take a very different approach to this type of issue. And this is an example of a United pilot who was really considering uh, having to retire early because of her neck. She had disc bulges and bad facet joints who were, we were able to help. And another issue that we treat is chronic SI joint pain, uh, which these days, uh, there are a lot of fusions going around, a lot of devices being sold to fuse the SI joint. And again, the problem there is that then overloads the hip below and overloads the lumbar spine above. And our approach using platelets or stem cells uh, has the potential to help heal the joint. So our focus is not to fuse the joint. And this is a, a really nice story on the blog. Uh, this is a gentleman who we were able to help in his SI joint and hip problem, who really uh, was able to do some amazing things in Nepal after we treated him. So to wrap it all up, uh, to learn more, spend some time watching our videos, uh, really put a lot of time into these videos to try to help people understand complex problems uh, in very simple ways. You might consider reading our book, Orthopedics 2.0. Uh, it's in its third edition. And I was just told this weekend it's now been downloaded 50,000 times from the internet. And uh, so it's got wide circulation. You might also consider our lab engineered stem cell support supplement. Unlike everyone else uh, who might do a supplement, we didn't just sort of go online and read a bunch of papers that seemed to show that this supplement might do that. We actually did a year of lab research. And that year of lab research led to certain supplement components that we saw doing good things uh, with stem cells. It's also a potent anti-inflammatory type formula, meaning that many of its components are known anti-inflammatory supplements. And there's a lot of different clinics out there doing stem cell work, especially these days in the spine. So you should probably run when you see a clinic that treats every A through C disease, i.e. wants to treat your spine and your MS and your knee and your impotence and your uh, baldness, etc. One that promises extremely high success rates that views stem cells as mag magic pixie dust to treat all spinal conditions 
as you've seen here today, that's really not a viable type approach based on our decade long experience where the physician is not an MD or a DO and the clinic just opened but claims to have treated thousands of patients. We do have a provider network around the country. Not all of our clinics do spine, some of, some of which are only joint focused. So please look on the website to try to find the clinics that are certified and specialized in spine. And we really focus on being very specific about choosing highly qualified providers. So in conclusion, Regenix isn't magic stem cells. It's advanced and precise interventional orthopedics. We've been treating the spine with stem cells longer than anyone else in the US. We have more published online registry data than anyone else. We spend more resources than anyone else stacking the deck in our patients' favor, i.e. we have an extensive research program and we have more treatment options available than anyone else. So thanks for watching and I really appreciate your time.